Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's virtual conference. My name is Nehal Khosla and I'm your host for today. Dun & Bradstreet India in association with Google Cloud and Pluto 7 are glad to present this virtual conference on the pertinent topic of reduce COVID-19 impact on your supply chain for uninterrupted manufacturing. The entire series will host the thoughts of renowned thought leaders of the industry on the importance of digital future in the current scenario, which are in line with the recently announced government policies. Before we begin, I request everyone to please take a moment and go through the guidelines that are going to be displayed on your screens right now. We encourage you to ask more questions in this session and we request you to please type in your queries in the question section that is present at the bottom of your screens. These will be taken up in the Q&A session after the panel discussion. You can also use the chat box that you can see at the bottom of your screens to share your views and comments on the topic that we're discussing today. A couple of tips here. We want to know you more and hence we mention uh, we request you to please mention your name and your company name along with the question that you're going to be posting. You can also direct the question to a particular person by mentioning their name while you post the question. To help you understand better, we will display two, box, uh, two reference boxes, one of the Q&A and the other of the chat. As you can see on the left hand side is the Q&A box and on the right hand side is how your chat box will appear. All you have to do is take your cursor towards the lower end of your screen. You see a chat icon that gives you uh, access to the chat box and just on the right hand side of the chat icon, you see three dots. By clicking on it, you'll be able to see the Q&A tab. We request you to please make use of these two boxes in the entire session to converse better with the moderator and the speakers of the session. Well, well, this session is not only about questions. As mentioned earlier, you also have a chance to win some exciting Zozo Day e-vouchers by participating in an engaging quiz that we have lined up for you. As you can see on your screens, all you have to do is earn minimum of 50 cloud miles to be eligible to earn these Zozo Day e-vouchers. By just following the activities that you can see on your screens, the first one being the quiz, which will give you certain cloud miles. The second one being asking relevant questions, which will give you further 15 cloud miles. And the third one being sharing your views and comments, which will give you further 15 cloud miles. This is not it. It is mandatory to take the poll questions that will be running during the session as well. So I would request you not to miss out on the poll and do take the polling questions as well. Moving on, let's take a quick look at the flow of today's session. Please refer the agenda that is displayed on your screens right now. Our speakers for the day are Mr. Jaydeep Jaira, Mr. Manju Devdas, Mr. Pulkit Gupta, Mr. Vivek Sharma, Mr. Ankur Chaturvedi, Mr. Vivek Podar, Mr. Tarun Khurana and Mr. Sandeep Kaul. A promising agenda with an eminent lineup of speakers, isn't it? I would like to take this opportunity to welcome and thank everyone for being a part of this virtual conference today. With this, let's kick start with the opening speaker of the day. I would now like to invite Mr. Jayadeep Jairam, engineer, Google Cloud to share his views and set the context for today's discussion. Welcome Mr. Jairam. Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, sir, we've given you the presentation, right? Uh, let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes, we're able to see it. So, uh, good, uh, good, mo uh, warm good morning to everyone. My name is Jaydeep. I'm a customer engineer, part of the Google Cloud team. And uh, in the next 15 minutes, what I plan to do is talk about uh, why Google Cloud uh, and why data analytics on Google Cloud. So uh, when you look at uh, Google Cloud, uh, Google Cloud is an end-to-end -end, uh, sort of cloud platform which has multiple components, uh, uh, infrastructure as a service, 
application as a service through containers, data management as a service where we support multiple sorts of databases, be it relational, NoSQL, or say a new SQL. And we have the entire analytics platform, which is called Smart Analytics. We also offer uh, the entire productivity and collaboration suite through G Suite. So all in all, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, cloud platform which organizations can leverage to build their applications or their data platforms. And uh, there is a growing momentum for uh, adopting Google Cloud uh, globally. And as you can see, this is just a reference list of customers that we have uh, across the different geographies and different verticals. So what makes uh, Google Cloud different? Uh, there are certain sort of key attributes which makes Google Cloud stand out. One is best-in-class security. Uh, so Google uh, builds its own hardware um, and the security is built right from the chipset to the fiber, to the server and data center, right? We also offer encryption by default, which is again something which uh, is a unique proposition from Google Cloud. The second is around hybrid and multi-cloud. So Google believes in an open and uh, collaborative sort of uh, cloud ecosystem where most of our services are either open sourced, be it things like Kubernetes or TensorFlow or Apache Beam, so on and so forth, which enables organizations to either run hybrid cloud architectures or multi-cloud architectures. The third capability, which we will uh, dive a little bit more deeper into in the data and analytics space is around fully managed no-ops. Uh, this is also called serverless, where the entire notion of provisioning infrastructure is something which is abstracted. And as a user, you are just leveraging the platform to build your business applications. The servers are all provisioned and managed by Google. So uh, as an example, uh, you could just upload your data and start running your queries. Uh, and behind the scenes, all the infrastructure that is needed to run that particular SQL is provisioned by Google and managed by Google. So this enables uh, fast time to market. The fourth capability is around embedded AI and ML. Uh, Google is known for its artificial intelligence and ML capabilities. Uh, and most of us as consumers of multiple Google products, uh, be it Gmail, YouTube, Google search, we all get to see this sort of capability. So the same capability that uh, is leveraged within Google is also uh, available to large enterprises through uh, the Google Cloud platform. And lastly, uh, the best of Google. So uh, Google Cloud is just one part of Google. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, great things uh, which happen within Google. So be it Android, uh, be it Google Maps, uh, all those sort of innovations are offered uh, when somebody chooses to use uh, Google Cloud as their platform of choice. The other sort of differentiated uh, offering that we have is around our, our network. Uh, so Google is uh, uh, one of the uh, only sort of cloud providers which has its own fiber that connects uh, all the sort of, uh, uh, like which connects all the continents. And this is, uh, this was primarily uh, done to serve the Google products, right? So when, when people started using search or Gmail or Google Sheets or Drives or YouTube, we had to render the content very quickly. So for, for that, Google had to build its own fiber optics throughout the world. So there is an interesting trivia which says that 30% of the internet traffic goes on the Google network. Now, when somebody uses Google Cloud, they also get access to the same network, which is very fast and which is privately managed. So uh, when, you, when you move data across regions or when you move data across continents, what happens is instead of the data traversing over public cloud, it traverses over the Google private network and thereby enabling very fast uh, data transfers. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous slide, uh, the security and the encryption is done by default. Uh, and also we add a lot of capabilities around data leak prevention. We offer services like DLP to protect any exfiltration of data. So uh, that was uh, at a very high level, some of the key features of Google Cloud. Now, when you look at why data and analytics, right? So every organization today is looking at how they can leverage the data that they already have or collecting uh, uh, to, to be able to differentiate themselves, right? How they can leverage that data. And, and uh, to do that, they would need newer systems, new capabilities. 
So why Google Cloud should be leveraged as, as part of these new digital initiatives is something that we will cover now. So uh, one of the primary uh, things that uh, I want to talk about is uh, how big data is in our DNA. Uh, and primarily because we have nine products with more than 1 billion uh, monthly active users, right? So uh, as I said, uh, all of us or most of us use Gmail as our personal email ID. And you would have seen the smart compost feature, right? Or when you search something in Google search, the next time you start search, uh, searching for something, it, it remembers and it starts recommending, right? So, so there is big data, there is AI ML in all our products, and that is in our DNA, right? And through Google Cloud, we offer those sort of capabilities to our customers. The second aspect is around serverless. Uh, as I was talking earlier, uh, the no ops sort of architecture, where what typically happens is when, when organizations are building these large platforms, uh, they, they provision a lot of hardware and they need to do a lot of things. So the, the primary objective of setting up this platform is to generate analytics or generate insights. But what happens is majority of the time, and we've observed that about 85% of the time actually goes in doing either monitoring, performance tuning, optimization of the infrastructure, resource configuration, so on and so forth. Right. And the last 15% is what typically teams uh, use to uh, generate business value. Through the serverless architecture, what we, we offer is all the gray areas, which are typically something which don't add to business value, is managed by Google. And uh, the, the team can then focus just on generating insights and analytics. And we have a, a rich history uh, of our, our track records uh, and primarily because Google had to face uh, this large data much before many other organizations. So over the last 15 to 20 years, Google has either open source a lot of technologies like TensorFlow, Kubernetes, and so on, or they have written multiple research papers like Google File System, MapReduce, Dremel, so on. And using uh, these research papers or these products, there has been a large open source movement. So if you see Hadoop, if you see HBase, if you see Drill, uh, so on and so forth, these are all inspired by the Google research papers. Now, what we offer through Google Cloud is that same innovation, but in a no ops managed serverless uh, capability. And we are driving convergence uh, on across these four areas. So. Uh, we are driving convergence across data lakes and data warehouses. So typically organizations have two sorts of infrastructure, one for data lake, one for data warehouse. We are trying to bridge this gap and create a single platform which can cater to both these sort of requirements. The second is organizations are moving more and more from batch to real time. And what we are also doing in this space is unifying the two. So you again don't need to have separate architectures, separate platforms for doing real time or batch. There can be a single architecture which can do both. The third is around analytics, AI, and ML. Again, this is all infused into the platform and dependent on your use case, you can pick and choose uh, which sort of capability you want to enable. And lastly, around hybrid and multi-cloud, as I spoke earlier, uh, we believe in open source and through Anthos as our hybrid and multi-cloud sort of software layer, we are bringing all the data innovations that we have uh, through uh, through Anthos to multi or hybrid uh, technologies. Uh, this is a smart analytics platform. Uh, as I said, uh, there is end-to-end -end sort of capability within the platform. So right from PubSub, which is uh, our global messaging service, to IoT core for for ingesting data uh, from our from devices or from cars from any of uh, uh, any of the automotive sort of devices uh, can be done. Uh, then once the data has been collected, the next step is to process the data. Again, there are multiple capabilities, data flow uh, being one, uh, data proc is our managed Hadoop Spark, data fusion is our visual ETL tool. So think of it like your Informatica or talent, but managed by Google, where you can visually build pipelines. And then when you deploy the pipeline, we take care of provisioning the infrastructure and running that pipeline. And data prep is the final service which can be used for data profiling, data cleansing, so on and so forth. From a data lake, data warehouse standpoint, we have BigQuery, and we'll talk about it a bit more, uh, cloud storage, and then multiple database technologies. And finally, on the visualization side, we, we integrate with almost all the visualization tools, uh, but we also recently acquired a company called Looker, uh, and we're using uh, either Looker or any visualization tools, uh, you can be you can leverage the platform to 
uh, visualize or analyze the data. Uh, data catalog is our data governance service. So think of it like a Google search for your data, wherein you would be given a search bar. You can search for attributes and we surface the relevant information that is available in your data, cat data environment. And lastly, Composer is the managed workflow or or orchestration tool. So when you build pipelines, you would need to orchestrate that. So Composer is our managed service to do these uh, workflow orchestrations. Now coming to BigQuery, uh, BigQuery is our enterprise grade uh, data warehousing solution. It is fully ANSI 2011 compliant. Uh, we have customers who are running uh, five to 10 terabytes of data in a data warehouse. Two companies like Twitter, Yahoo, or Spotify, who are running 300, 400 petabytes of data in the same infrastructure. So this has a pay-as-you-go model or a fixed price model. The data is encrypted by default. Uh, and then, uh, as I said, it is serverless. Uh, the same platform can be leveraged both for your batch as well as for your real-time streaming uh, ingestion. Um, it has built-in ML. Uh, so what we offer is one of the capabilities is uh, how you can write your ML models using SQL. So BigQuery offers you that capability where you can build your regression, classification, or clustering models using a SQL dialect. And uh, it can be the single platform which can cater to both your data warehouse or your data lake uh, requirements. BigQuery also has GIS capabilities. So if you have geospatial information and you want to analyze the data, for instance, how many users uh, uh, downloaded my app in, in a 10 kilometer radius. So it so BigQuery supports the entire GIS capability. You don't need to move the data out. In a SQL dialect, you can run these SQLs. We also give a map capability where you can visualize all this data. And as I said, uh, BigQuery also offers ML. Uh, so as you can see on the screen now, you can write a SQL query and pass the model type as the model name. So you can say linear regression, logistic regression, so on, and build a model using a SQL dialect. So this is one of the many tools that we offer from an AI ML capability. The last sort of capability that I want to talk about is uh, uh, querying using natural language. So as you can see on the screen uh, here, you would see that you can type uh, your questions in free from natural language. And behind the scenes, this gets executed against BigQuery. Uh, so the, the natural language, English language is translated into a SQL query and the relevant data is surfaced from BigQuery. So this integration is al already available in Google Sheets, but in the roadmap is, uh, we are also planning to integrate it with our chatbot solution for Dialogflow and other sort of interfaces. Now, the last thing that I wanted to touch upon is uh, how you can integrate your AI ML or how, how you can start your journey around AI ML. So, as, uh, uh, so why customers choose Google for AI ML is uh, around these four. One is around scale. Uh, so uh, uh, like we offer the entire sort of cloud platform where you can run things at a heavy scale. Uh, second is speed. So we have a specific hardware or specialized hardware called tensor processing units which are optimized to run your deep learning model. So if you were to build a deep learning model for your vision or video or voice use cases, you can use tensor processing units to speed up the entire training uh, uh, time. Right? The last is around quality. Uh, so Google has a lot of uh, uh, models that it leverages internally. So through some of our APIs, we offer the same models to our customers. So the quality and the benchmarks are already guaranteed. And lastly, accessibility is through AutoML. We offer a, a UI-based platform where users can uh, upload their data uh, and tell how they want to uh, look at their data. So what is the input and what is the output? And behind the scenes, we train the model for you and offer the best model which solves that problem uh, as, a, as a model that you can then download and use it within your application. Now, this is our entire stack uh, of uh, what which we call as Cloud AI platform. This is broken into multiple layers. At the very top is our SaaS solution. So things like talent solution, uh, contact center. Contact center is our call center solution, which is a fully sort of uh, a software solution with bots, uh, knowledge, knowledge repos, uh, topic modeling, so on and so forth. Uh, and document understanding is our OCR solution. So if you have a lot of 
documents that you want to understand and extract information from. Uh, document understanding AI is our software-based solution to achieve those or solve for those problems. The next set of APIs are, are, are the APIs that we offer to uh, like publicly, and most of us would have seen this. So when you look at Google Translate, Google Speech to Text, these are models that we have trained on, on publicly available data on Google and expose them as APIs. Right? And you can use these models uh, or APIs to solve for many problems. One of the limitations that this uh, these APIs have is they have a fixed output. So you cannot customize the output. Right? But what happens, what we've seen is, uh, uh, let's say if you take the example of vision, uh, users typically want to customize the output. So for instance, if you were to show a bag, the vision output might just recommend the uh, vision image as bag. But now you might want to classify it as whether it is a red colored bag or a blue colored bag. Let's say that's the use case. So vision will not be able to do that. So in that case, the third layer is where uh, we bring in auto ML. So in the case of auto ML, as I was saying, if you have a bunch of information which is labeled and you upload it to our UI and you say that what is the output that you want to see. So in this case, for if you were to upload 100 images of bags and you said that I want to see and I want to see the output as red, green or blue. And then you say that build a model for me all through the UI. What we do is we run thousands of models behind the scenes. And then finally, a model gets generated, which best, best solves your use case. This model is then offered to you, which you can then download and use it within your application. This capability is offered across video, natural language. So for instance, if you want to do, let's say, ticket routing, right? So support request ticket routing or sentiment analysis, so on and so forth. And again, across translation and all that. The last thing is around tables. So the same auto ML capability is also offered to your structured data. So if you have your data in BigQuery, and if you want to predict a specific column, you can just point uh, your BigQuery table to auto ML and we build the model for you. The last layer is the AI platform and infrastructure. So let's say that you are trying to solve a use case where either the software-based solution the pre-trained API or the auto ML capabilities cannot solve for it. In which case we offer the entire Google sort of bare infrastructure for your use case with notebooks, uh, with hardware accelerators, with uh, different sort of frameworks like TensorFlow, Keras, Torch, Scikit-Learn, all those, right? And we also have pre-built pre uh, VM images for doing deep learning as well as Jupyter Notebook. So using all these tools, you can build a model from scratch. So as you can see, the entire platform offers multiple tools and based on your use case, you can pick and choose either one of these services or APIs, or you can stitch together as end-to-end -end solution using uh, APIs or capabilities across, across different teams. Okay. So that's all I had, uh, and I hope to connect with you on, uh, uh, on the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jairam. That was a quite informative session. I'm sure all the participating audience have some key takeaways and uh, we look forward to questions and their views and comments. Uh, moving on, it's quiz time now and uh, we look forward to all of you participating in this quiz. A few instructions to guide you. We'll be running the quiz on menti.com and the link with the login code and uh, the link that you can log into is uh, posted in the chat box. Um, all you have to do is grab your phone or go to a different browser on your laptop and go to the site called menti.com, which is on your screens right now. That is www.menti.com. It's also given in your chat boxes with the login code. The login code is displayed on your screens as well. That is 562940. I repeat 562940. Once you log in with the login code, it will ask you for your email address. We request you all to please mention your official email address, which will help us identify you and allocate the cloud miles to you rightly. Please uh, mention your official email ID and your official name uh, once it prompts you for the same. On your screens, you will see the Menti uh, link right now that is going to be displayed by my colleague. 
like i said all you have to do is go to your chat boxes and click on the link that is given all our speakers all our delegates are requested to please uh, go on to menti.com as well uh, you can go to the chat box and see there is a link login link given which is menti.com once you go to menti.com you will have to enter the login code which is given at the top of your screens as you can see which is Five six two nine four zero. We'll wait for another a minute and then we shall start the quiz. I request you all to please join in fast. a lot of you joining in thank you so much looking forward to having all of you in the quiz section i repeat once again you can go to the chat box you'll see a login link uh, which will take you directly to the login page or even if you type in a separate browser menti.com you'll be taken to the page where you have to enter the login code to start with the login code is 562940 once you log in with the login code it will prompt you for a uh, for your uh, login, uh, for your email ID, we request you to type your official email ID, which helps you, uh, which helps us identify you and allocate the cloud miles. In case if you don't see it in your chat boxes, all you can do is go to a separate browser, go to Google Chrome or the browser that you have. Go to Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer, whatever browser you have, please go to your browser, type menti.com. That is M E N T I dot com. One last time, once you're there, you will have to enter the login code, which is 562940. Once you log in the login code, please mention your official email address and your name. And we shall start the quiz. Just to update you, there'll be certain questions. Each question will have 25 seconds to be answered. After every question, there will be three to four options that will be displayed on your screens. You have to answer right and answer fast in order to be on top of the scoreboard. After the quiz, we'll also have, uh, the quiz will give you certain cloud miles, asking relevant questions and sharing your views also have certain cloud miles. And we shall be running the poll shortly as well. Last 30 seconds and we shall start the quiz. Okay, let's start. First question, live migration to a cloud involves, there are four options on your screen. Remember, you'll have to answer right and answer fast. Let's see what is the right answer. Downtime of few milliseconds is the right answer. No problem to the ones who did not get it right. Congrats to the ones who got it right. Let's move on to the next one. A 
I'm sorry. I think we shall restart it. Uh, there's some technical glitch. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, you will see the next question on your screens and there are certain seconds allocated to it. And the right answer is operating. Moving on to the next one. Flash is a vital technique to create cloud computing centers. And the right answer is on your screen, a virtualization. A, option A, virtualization. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And the scoreboard, the leaderboard shows Mr. Amit Gaikwar to be on top. Congratulations, Mr. Amit. Uh, congratulations to the others as well. I'm sure there are certain cloud miles that we've allocated to you. And uh, we request you all to please uh, put in your questions and your comments also in the questions and the chat box so that we are able to allocate the cloud miles to you. Congratulations to the top scorers of the quiz. We shall be running the poll shortly. And as I said earlier, it's mandatory to take part in the poll. With this, we move on to the next uh, speaker of the session. Our next speaker for the session is Mr. Manju Devdas, CEO of Pluto 7 and supply chain domain expert. Please welcome Mr. Manju. Thank you. Okay, if we can pass the ball to share. Okay. Right, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, Manju, we're able to see your screen. All right. It's uh, great to have the audience. My name is uh, Manju Devdas. I'm the founder CEO of Pluto7, um, based in California. Um, as, as a partner of Google, it's my, uh, I'm fortunate to have engaged with about 300 odd customers who have been in various stages of journey of digital transformation. And over the last, especially over the last three years, these, this time period over the, la the last two months plus the coming months is extraordinary time period in the supply chain world for especially the scenarios that many of you are dealing with, which is the disruption and all the way from manufacturing distribution to the end, uh, serving the end customers. And, as we have been solving this uh, for these uh, supply chain and manufacturing problems for years uh, and have won the partner of the year award from Google, when, when we focus on solving a customer problems, we have been focusing on the marketing sales and supply chain, specifically around the 15 use cases that are listed here. And broadly, if you look at it, it is, it, it, it is about your customer experience by running efficient supply chain. And there are many logos that we work with. And when we look across these companies that we have worked with in different, uh, different regions, primarily around uh, between uh, India and US and a few European logos, and the list grows on, the common theme as they work on, uh, on leverage the platform that Jaydeep uh, showed you early on, it really comes down to having a scalable, robust, simplified architecture where they can have a business real-time view of what's happening at the business so that they can respond with more better and accurate decisions. Decisions that an AI and ML can help or decisions they can make to 
through an agile planning system. And when we walk in, we help them by bringing these thought leaderships, helping them understand how they can adapt, understanding the process, understanding the people, understanding the change management, how to enable machine learning and AI, either into their customer experience or into the supply chain and, and activating the, the capabilities to make better decisions. With COVID-19, um, the, the, the disruption that we are seeing, and, and I call it like once in a hundred year scenario, I do sit on advisory at University of Southern California, which is uh, one of the world's best for, so for, for supply chain management. And we discuss the most complex supply chain problems in the world. And when we look at what we have been discussing over the last few years on the China trade wars to the Silk Road and many of those, uh, how they would impact the trade wars and, and how the goods movement and, and the supply chains around the world, what we are seeing is way more multiple fold effect that we are seeing right now. And one of the topics that I'll talk about is the bullwhip effect. And it's a lot, uh, supply chain behavior has got to do a, a lot uh, with, with the human behavior because at the end of the day, at every node in your supply chain network, be it for your customer, or your retailers, your warehouse, your manufacturers, or your suppliers, psychology plays a role because of which they are holding excess and shortages. And, and, and they are, when they have to plan multiple scenarios, if you're a demand planner sitting in one of these nodes uh, and, and you have to bet on how COVID-19 virus will take shape, it is, there is a lot of guesswork going on. And if I look at the Indian economy and, and the, what's happening in the market, um, Massive economy um, has been growing for many years, and uh, now the COVID-19 brings a slowdown uh, in terms of uh, impacting many sectors. And when we when we talk to the leaders in various large enterprises and and even uh, mid mid customers, one of the key things that comes up over and over again is I want to know everything that's happening in my business, business real time. I want to have better ways to make decisions, more accurate decisions, whether it's at my distribution center or the stock in my manufacturing center, or even in my, uh, in my distribution centers of logistics uh, nodes, and, and also worrying about human safety. How do I maintain social distancing? How do I maintain uh, safety of humans? How do I make sure that if I have 30% labor shortage, how can I still monitor and manage and, and drive mobility in my supply chain. And added to this, now when you're dealing with the bullwhip effect where there is a sense of paranoia of, of not having control over the inventory or the downstream implication of having either too much or too little inventory, there is a cascading effect of, of one causing an effect in, in the other areas where it's you know, poor demand planning leads to supply planning and then there is there is a reverse effect of trying to force correct the mistakes that were made, either uh, overshooting or undershooting. And now what's, it's some of the KPIs that was considered as normal business, as in your forecast accuracy being at 80% is no longer good, or 90% is no longer good, your, your deliveries, and sometimes they're off by 20, 30%, and deliveries are off by a significant portion. And now they're looking at, Three key key things, right? And and a lot of it that uh, the platform enables, which is uh, one, I need to have better visibility into my uh, what's happening in the business so that I can make better decisions and transform my business, transform my business in the form of digital transformation or transform the supply chain so that these KPIs can now uh, now be at uh, uh, way better than what what the norm was considered norm uh, in the in the enterprise. If you look at the history, there are only a few times in history the the at, at scale when you see people open for change. This is one of the best times in the recent history that we have known where humans at every level in organizations are ready for change. And when we talk about change or digital transformation, we talk about introducing visibility across your data sets, across your uh, different departments in your supply chain, from your demand planning to supply planning to supply selection, and bringing those data sets together. When JD presented a platform that you have all been 
building for decades in the form of various Google applications, the same platform, they have half the world's data on Google platform. Now think about your enterprise data. You can put all your enterprise data and query in less than 30 seconds. Think about what that does to your supply chain. Any data that you ever have collected in your enterprise can be queried in less than 30 seconds. Now that changes how you think about your forecast. That changes how you think about looking at your supply chain real time. That changes how you think about the SLAs and the process and, and the steps that you, uh, that you have defined. Because in a rule-based system, you have defined your demand to, to be generated at a certain time and their supply to be calculated the next day. Why next day? Why not the same day? Why not the same few minutes after your demand? And why not recalibrate your demand supply and supply selection? Yes, it is unrealistic to think that you're gonna make everything fast and your process will adopt. We get that. But that's where you have to plan it out, right? You have a Ferrari sitting, you want to use that, but you also have to bring the people and change management with it. So the point we are trying to make here is the technology is ready and it's proven and it's continuing to get proven. When we work with customers today with retailers, some of the large retailers, they are looking at not running one machine learning model. They are looking at running tens, hundreds, or even thousands of machine learning model because they know and it's been proven that when these models are fed with the right data, with the right, with enough data patterns in it. It's very hard for humans to beat these machine learning models. It's almost like an impractical uh, effort to put where, where the amount of computation that you can run at scale to get those accuracy levels, it doesn't make sense for humans to be planning some of those scenarios. Now that human labor, which is, uh, which is freed up now, uh, where, where these machine learning models are generating better accuracy, now you have, you, you, you're, labor power is used to make more complex decision or more ambiguous decisions where you cannot build a machine model. Machine learning and AI is not gonna solve all your problems, but there's a significant portion of search and decision-making that can be enabled with machine learning and AI. And when we solve these problems, so we are having solved this repeatedly, we have packaged these as solutions so that you don't have to figure out how to bring all the how do I bring data in? How do I bring the machine learning? How do I configure the machine learning model? How do I build a, we put a visualization on top of it. So we have packaged those things for you and I'll show the demo in a second. So that when you have your different inputs, your, your inputs could be your history, your, uh, you might even bring uh, trends around macroeconomic trends or even how COVID-19 scenario is shaping up. Is there a lockdown in a given state or a city? And how do you blend that data with your own shipment or you know, future forecast? Because that is going to, your COVID-19 scenario itself is going to adjust your forecast and thereby your supplier and your manufacturing, labor availability, and thereby your, uh, your inventory. Now, when we package these solutions, we bundle all these things so that your data pipeline, your data cleansing, the machine learning model, uh, is is bundled and now you can get to a better forecast accuracy. These solutions are like 70% prepackaged so that every business, we know every business is different and, and the inputs that you give to kind of tuning that has to be done are gonna be different. So the 30% the flexibility remains. Then there are other problems like churn risk if you're losing customers or capacity planning or substitution products, remaining useful life. If you are monitoring machines, there are all these other variations of machine learning models that, that are enabled. And when you look at, um, at the end of the day, when you look at analyzing your business, whether you look at top down, once you bring all your enterprise data, um, you can correlate your supply chain, which is the back office to your front office, which is your marketing sales and supply chain together. And in other words, you know, you're, you're now in the, in the name of cloud and putting all these machine learning models, you're putting your SNOP on steroids now. And what that allows you is not just get to a better demand forecast accuracy through machine learning models, which are self-learning. And once done right, they will continuously keep evolving. It reduces your excess and shortage, which is the end goal anyway. So, and then you can predict and monitor your supply real time and as your inventory 
is uh, you're going down in a warehouse and, and, and then you want to recalibrate, you have the capabilities to adjust them. And, and now the customers are starting to think that how do I now relate my sentiments in my marketing to my supply, to my demand? How do I change my revenue and, and take signals of losing customers because I don't have stock? How do I bring all of these together? In other words, you have now connected the data sets, you have now connected your enterprise and you have made your supply chain more efficient. And when we take our customers, be it automobile, retail, or any of these customers, they look at it now like, okay, now that if I can centralize all the data, if I can put machine learning models to do a lot of simpler decisions, now I have the human labor to make more advanced and complex decisions, how do I look at my supply chain enter and make it more agile, make it more efficient, and, and, and so on. So now let, let me pass it on to my colleague, uh, Pulkit, who'll walk you through some real world examples of how all of what I just explained has been adopted. Go ahead, Pulkit. Thanks, uh, thanks Manju. Can you pass me the ball? Definitely, just a minute, okay. We'll share the presentation right with you. Yeah, it's shared. My screen is visible. Uh, not yet. No? Not yet. Not yet. Could you maybe reshare it? Sure. Pulkit, let me know if you want me to share that for you. Sure, Mandu. Uh, I guess you can share the screen. I think I send you through. Yeah. So I'll leave the ball back. Uh, you know. Okay. All right. So I'll continue to share and uh, pull it. Go ahead. See my screen? Yes, Manju. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, guys, the very first use case that we're talking about here is uh, what we've done with Synaptics. And we all know they are one of the most popular manufacturers of hardware and software devices. These people used to collect a lot of material for their devices from the vendors across the world. But due to, you know, the improper supply chain management, they used to end up with 30% more inventory. We built them a solution that could uh, give them an accurate, accurate sales forecast so that they can you know, tie the same thing up to their vendors and get the right amount of uh, raw materials in right time. Not only that, we help them in uh, minimizing impact of bulk effect on their supply chain. Manju, next, please. Similarly, you know, with, with Cisco, you know, as we all know, they are one of the largest manufacturers of networking uh, gadgets across the world. So we basically started with Cisco around three years back. And since then, we have done a lot of projects with Cisco, and uh, some of them have been highlighted here. The, one of the most successful projects that we did with Cisco was around demand forecasting where we were able to achieve around 85% to 95% accuracy on their top level products. Not only that, we basically provided them the customer insights from their customer database in days. Uh, that used to initially take weeks for them to get those insights. Next, Manju. Okay, so this is something uh, that we did with one of the largest two-wheeler manufacturers in India. So these people are having around 25,000 different spare parts and they ba basically collect all these parts in one of their uh, plants in Rajasthan. Now, the problem was, though they are collecting this inventory to, for their suppliers and for their retailers, but 40% of all the components that they used to receive 
from their manufacturers was getting stored without any validation. So that means that you know sometimes the wrong parts are delivered to the uh, people and therefore you know uh, hampering their reputation. So they came to us asking for a solution that can recognize these 25,000 parts automatically, thus reducing the human intervention and uh, providing the right product in the right time to the right people. Basically, it helped them reduce the reverse logistic cost by 75% and additionally improve the customer satisfaction. Next slide, please, Manju. Okay, so this is another tubular manufacturer from India. Now, though they uh, do a lot of sailing of their vehicles up, uh, over the year, but they were facing issues with their so, uh, customer care centers. People were not coming to them for their you know, uh, broken vehicles. So they wanted us to design a solution based on machine learning and AI that can take up the different parameters from the vehicle, like odometer reading and all that stuff, and come up with a uh, with, with the service recommendation so that it reduces the uh, clinical diagnosis time by 70% and can provide the uh, satisfactory solutions to their customers. Next, Manju. No, so this is AB and Bev, and this is one of the largest uh, breweries across the world. When we talk about beer brands like Budweiser, Corona, all are manufactured under the hood of AB and Bev. They have a very unique problem. So they have these K2 filters in their manufacturing plant. Now these K2 filters needs to be replaced time to time. Uh, what they they have been doing, uh, the process they have been following for replacing these uh, filters was totally based on past experience, and therefore they were not able to get out or judge out that sweet spot so that they don't lose out on the resources also don't you know uh, impact the uh, quality of the beer so we presented them an ml solution that was able to predict that sweet spot for them when they could replace those k2 filters thus providing them 60 percent longer runs of their beer manufacturing and reducing the costs this basically saved them around millions of rupees uh, when it got into production next manju Okay. So this is uh, this is one of the bed sheet manufacturers in in, in USA, and these people sell over, sell uh, their products over Amazon, over their uh, offline stores, and over their own e-commerce portal. So uh, so they again they were having the issues with their uh, with their inventory. We gave them the demand uh, demand ML solution that helped them to re reduce their inventory by fifty percent. Not only that, the money they saved from uh, reduced inventory, they used the same money in uh, provide in manufacturing more variety of bed sheets and thus, uh, thus uh, increasing the satisfaction of their customers. Next slide, Manju. Okay, so this is uh, this is you know one of the largest grocery stores in USA. You can think uh, of the store in terms of Big Bazaar or Easy Day in India. They came up with a very, uh, they came up with a very unique problem, where they wanted us to uh, provide them an solution that can help them out in assorting the products. Uh, in other words, you can say that they wanted us to develop a ML solution that can tell them which products are to be kept together on the shelves so that it increases the propensity of the customer to buy. For example, milk can be uh, kept with uh, biscuits or bread can be kept with, with butter. So we created those ML solutions for them and that basically helped them in 50% reduction of their inventory. Plus this, uh, this particular solution was scalable, scalable enough so that it can be applied across the stores in US. Next slide, Manju. So this is one of the largest uh, car manufacturers in India. And you know, seeing the trend, these people are also working out with their electric vehicles. But the, uh, but the major challenge with electric vehicles is their battery. We need to know 
the right time to charge their battery or even more than that we need to know that uh, how much more i can travel with the remaining battery uh, we have so we created the ml solution for them that could predict the remaining useful lifetime of the battery which in turn was useful in predicting how much the car will travel more before it needs to be recharged uh, next slide manju yeah so that's it uh, you know the, uh, we, uh, like i have talked about you know some of the use cases some of the successful uh, stories that uh, we have that pluto 7 has uh, you know achieved with with uh, client across with clients across the world and this is something on our enterprise engagement model uh, we know that ai ml is pretty new to the customers and sometimes uh, you know uh, uh, clients are skeptical how it can be uh, fixed into their framework so that is we propose an ml workshop where we uh, where we introduce them about the gcp platform how their data can be plugged onto gcp platform and what kind of use cases are possible with the data they have once we have the right use cases with us from the workshop we move on to the next step where we are talking about eoc so this is something to prove that whatever we have talked about in the workshop is uh, we are having that capability and we can you know uh, bring about the fortune uh, with those use cases so that is what we prove in poc once the client is satisfied with the poc we basically move towards a production roll out where we create the automated data pipelines for them uh, on top of which these machine learning models work out and provide you the right results that's that is from my end and if you have questions please ping me on the chat and i'll be happy to answer thank you thank you mr gupta thank you manju for your session it was a very informative session moving on it's polling time and your thoughts matter a lot to us so please gear up to participate in the poll which is going to be displayed on your screens right now everyone must participate all our speakers our delegates there's going to be a poll that is going to be displayed on the right hand side of your screens now as you can see there are certain questions in all there are five questions i request you all to please scroll down your screens to see all the five questions also i'll request everybody to please go on mute As you can see, we have only one minute thirty seconds left. I would request everyone to please take the poll, as it is mandatory. And also, I would request you to please scroll down to see all the five questions and its options.
I would request all our speakers and delegates to please take the, please take the poll. In all, there are five questions. Do scroll down to see all the questions. Just to remind you, for the cloud miles, we uh, we request you to please take the polling session, uh, polling questions right away. Though we'll be sharing it as part of our mails after this session, but it's mandatory to take the polling in case we need to allocate the cloud miles and uh, you wish to uh, win a Zozo Day e voucher. Post this, we'll have the panel discussion. So please. Stay tuned for the most awaited knowledge sharing session. Okay. Thank you so much everyone for taking the poll. And with this, we'll move on to the next session for the day. Now let's move on to the most awaited knowledge sharing and interaction session, the panel discussion. The discussion is, is around the topic, reduce COVID-19 impact on your supply chain for uninterrupted manufacturing. And we have some very interesting names here. The session will be moderated by Mr. Vivek Sharma, Senior Domain Specialist, done in Bradstreet, India. Our first panelist, Mr. Ankit Chaturvedi, Head of International Supply Chain and Projects, Imami Limited. Thank you, Mr. Chaturvedi, for joining us. Following him is Mr. Vivek Poddar, Process Excellence, Supply Chain, Aether Energy, Private Limited. Thank you, Mr. Podar, for joining us. Next on the panel, Mr. Tarun Rai Kurana, Head of Procurement and Supply Chain, Uflex Limited. Thank you, Mr. Kurana, for joining us. We also have with us Mr. Sandeep Kaul, Head South India Supply Chain, Bennett Coleman and Company Limited. Thank you, Mr. Kaul, for joining us. And we'll also be joined by Mr. Manju Dev Das in the panel discussion right now. With this, let us begin the panel discussion. Over to you, Mr. Sharma. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. So, uh, a very warm welcome to all the panel speakers uh, and uh, Thank you so much for uh, to all the participants who have joined. In the interest of time and in order to ensure that we take up a maximum question and uh, able to cover uh, different areas, let me uh, start by asking first a uh, question to Mr. Ankur Chat uh, Chaturvedi and get his views. Sir, I would just like to know from you, uh, what are the business problems in supply chain that have great opportunities to impact the bottom line? Uh, well, my friend, uh, good morning and good morning to all the participants here. Uh, let me just, uh, before I add anything from my side, uh, Arpit gave us a presentation where he gave us an example. This manufacturer was to manage his inventory better, thus freeing up capital to expand into a wider product portfolio. Now that's something that they have achieved very recently and that's a case study that they have presented. So you would, I'm sure, have more data. Now, similarly, if you look at any other aspect of uh, supply chain, if you start from the demand planning, if I can plan my demand better, I will be able to service my customers better and better customer service would have a direct impact on a larger business. Another point that is relevant here is about the cost. Now, every cost which is saved, when you look at 10% reduction in cost versus 10% increase in uh, sales, your 10% reduction in cost would add to a much larger product uh, uh, increase in sales. 
percent increase in direct sales would be just that. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you so much for that answer. Uh, now uh, let me quickly move to Mr. Manju and to get his thought. While you spoke about it, Mr. Manju, I will also once again like to hear from you some aspects, and that's why I'm putting this question to you. So, according to you, what are the some basic requirements with, with respect to successful uh, deployment of an AI-based supply chain management system? If you can share your thoughts on that. Sure. So, first of all, I think the most uh, fundamental thing is to prepare your people to. Uh, understand the basics of ML and AI. Uh, there is no magic in it. It's just a lot of math at scale. And whatever they have been doing, it, they're just going to magnify and multiply it. It's just that when, when you take an exponential volume of computation, the outcome that you are going to get out of it is obviously going to be more accurate. Once they understand this aspect of it, uh, the feeds that the, the imaginations will go wild. Can I feed third party data? Can I feed my supplier information? Can I feed my sales pipeline? Whatever they think is relevant for that to sense demand, they will start feeding it. And you're because that's how their decision, their mind works when it comes to deciding on their demand and supply. So getting out of the myth that you know machine learning in ai one is difficult or you need a lot of programming or or this is magical it's none of those it is just whatever you already been making decisions you make limited decisions in eight hours this can do 10 times the number of decisions right getting that as one one key aspect right the second is not to just think about numbers and text as your data there's audio video there's text all these have signals which you comprehend as humans and you decide what you want to build your demand and supply based on. Now you have these platforms which allow you to take all those, uh, extract, transcribe your videos. There are what your customers are saying on the Twitter feeds. You can grab all those things, have different weightages and, and feed them in your real time and at incredibly low cost, right? So when you start thinking of it like this, you start optimizing your process, you start optimizing your SLAs, even if you make this mistakes in your demand scenarios, that's okay. You don't need to wait for 48 hours, which is the normal process that people take. Why wait for 48 hours? Why not one hour? Because if I know the mistake of self-correcting within an hour, it's a paradigm shift that things can happen that fast. We have patience in some of the online transactions that we do for personal life, but somehow we have built this patience to deal with enterprise inefficiencies because we can't bring the data together. The fundamental things I think that's if if this paradigm shift happens, the technology is ready, machine learning and AI is ready, uh, like yesterday. So that's my point of view. Go ahead. So you are trying to say that reskilling shouldn't be a challenge and it can be, you know, uh, taken care of by the company concern, which is going to you know incorporate all this uh, technology. Absolutely, and and uh, that. It is reskilling is usually thought of as a complex problem because it's a mental barrier people build that I don't want to pick a new technology or cloud is not for me or I've been doing this for 20 years, whatever the reasons are, right? So there is a mental barrier that people build. But uh, the, these are not very knowledgeable people. You know, they have a lot of domain knowledge. Those domain knowledge are required to transform businesses. So bringing them on board is very important. Okay. okay, thank you for that. That really helps. Uh, now let me quickly move to Mr. Sandeep call and uh, get his views on an equally interesting question, which is uh, from your perspective and, you know, from industry fo specific focus, what are some of the features you would like to see in your supply chain management system? Hello, good afternoon to all. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, thank uh, all, all of you to give, you know, giving me this opportunity to speak about uh, specific enhancements that uh, my industry would be looking at. So, uh, in terms of enhancements, I would like to uh, see some structural changes happening in the inbound supply chain of our industry. And uh, let me pick up one uh, very classical case. So, uh, our supply chain basically extend uh, as far as North America, Canada. Uh, we were large volumes of imported material from these countries. And uh, in the process, uh, many more and many uh, nodes of the supply chain assets get uh, used. And at times, uh, any lack of synchronization or uh, 
missing one entity can interrupt the entire supply chain and uh, result into millions of losses. And uh, recently, uh, during this COVID crisis, uh, we were hit by this port congestion issue in India. And uh, I know it has happened across the world where uh, disruptions were caused because many of these ships were getting containers, uh, carrying over material was getting quarantined at different ports, especially at the European ports. And there was shortage of labor, uh, uh, including in India. And uh, there was a large pileup of, of uh, uh, import containers uh, getting either held up at the transshipment ports or at the destination ports, and uh, ultimately resulting into a chronic grid block. So all these bottlenecks basically uh, reverberate throughout the supply chain and the cost of this disruption of huge. Uh, many of the panelists and the audience will be aware that uh, this retention and demerit charges uh, that an important like a space is humongous. These costs are basically exponential in nature. And at a current level, this is around anywhere between 100 to 150 dollars. So uh, I'm specifically looking at an uh, AI system which can basically uh, behave like an anticipatory, anticipatory logistic system and be able to uh, detect the risk uh, in the trade chain, in the supply lane, in the supply chains, in the, in the different ports, at different levels, and uh, warn of the supply managers about any you know, impending uh, pileup of a containers or material at these places. And this also results in a lot of uh, inventory pileup. So uh, we, we typically factor uh, 7 to 15 days of inventory uh, in our warehouses to cater for the shocks which happen through this board congestion and all. And I was speaking to some of my friends in uh, a footwear company, and it's an international footwear company. So they were talking about we spend annually around $200 million in uh, no, factoring this uh, specific buffer for these disruptions that can happen across supply chain. So I think uh, there's a real need in this area, and it's a, the and the benefits are huge. It's going to totally unlock the sector, and help not only this industry that I'm talking about where I'm from, but across the board, all the industries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Manju, if uh, you heard Mr. Sandeep uh, speak about uh, the inventory aspect, its maintenance, one question that naturally gets connected to this aspect is, you know. Uh, what kind of uh, inventory or the stock should be maintained? And, uh, you know, uh, the ability of uh, AI in predicting accurate uh, inventory levels. So, you know, uh, your thoughts on uh, how effective has been AI in predicting the inventory? And is this possible on a real time basis? So the, so the inventory maintenance, the excess and shortage maintenance, or the dealing with excess and shortage and the safety stocks that people maintain. It is uh, it is a byproduct of over a period of time. There are some inaccuracies in demand forecasting that's accepted as a norm to compensate for that. And there is variations in the market, which people gain experience and that gets built into this inventory management metrics and the processes. And then it becomes a norm to maintain X number of days or weeks of inventory. Now, after some time, the, the once the enterprise has accepted that this is the way to do business and all the KPIs are set, even a marginal improvement is recognized as a significant improvement. Unless we get hit with something like COVID-19, right? Because now the metrics are off by quite a bit. And everybody's got, at least many organizations are going back to the drawing board and say, we need to rethink at every node how we do business. And, and now there are, it's also an opportunity because now we can bring all the data in one place why not look at demand planner and supply planner and supplier selection, all these guys in one, one bucket rather than different departments. And the, the departments will still exist, but let them work together collaboratively. Let them work real time. Let us bring all these KPIs of safety stock and all these things and see why do we need to carry so much. If I can tell you, and if I can refine my inventory by 10% or improve accuracy by 10%, do you really need to carry that safety stock that you have? So these kind of questioning is happening across. And all of this is happening because now we have put the data in front of everybody and they are seeing real time data, they're collaborating and they have to go back and recalibrate the process and KPIs. So the answer is, uh, it's not only that, is it possible, but it's already happening. It's just that we will start seeing this maturity go up quarter over quarter. Uh, about two years from now, a real time uh, management of supply chain and using all the capabilities uh, we are talking about is given. We won't even talk about that as a as as a new as, you know something new. It will be part of our normal day-to-day -day business. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Ankur Chandrarathi, would you like to add something to this aspect? Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, I was just, uh, when you look at this, uh, when you, uh, the, the problem that most businesses face is that what we tend to continue doing with the standard and they rarely get challenged. And Manju rightly said, it's the COVID to wake us up out of our slumber. Now, when you have uh, uh, AI working in the background, your matrix is your KPIs get reviewed much faster and much more real time to give you direct results to your business. Uh, now, let me move to the next question and uh, ask Mr. Sandeep Kaul if he can share his views uh, on this. Uh, this uh, sir, uh, according to you, what which are some of the key sectors uh, that have successfully deployed AI based supply chain management systems? I have been uh, reading a lot about uh, e commerce sector. I think they are at the forefront of uh, integrating this AI technology into their not only into their supply chain, but also with their uh, tier one and tier two vendors. Okay. E-commerce in India is a very classical case. Okay. And uh, apart from that, I also see a lot of AI work happening with the uh, courier companies or the international logistics companies like DHL, TNT. Uh, they are heavily focusing on using AI into their distribution centers. Yeah. Uh, going back to e-commerce, uh, I would I, something which intri intrigued me and is of great interest is that how they not only uh, use this AI intelligence for uh, streamlining or increasing the visibility on the supply chain side, but also from the forecasting side. How do they basically gather the information and data uh, from the social media or from any other touch points about the behavior of the consumers and predicting that behavior in terms of translating to the sales? There are also classical examples and cases in food and beverage industries. And recently, you would have seen that uh, after this COVID-19 crisis, many of these uh, food chains like McDonald's and uh, Domino's, they have come up with the touchless uh, delivery and touch, uh, touchless uh, handling of their material because in, uh, it involves a lot of hygiene through these AI systems. Yeah. And I think going forward, the trajectory of uh, AI system in the post-COVID uh, world is going to go up only. Uh, Mr. Manju, you would have also seen this internationally and in India also in some context. So you, you will also like to add some sectors to this? Yeah, so we did, uh, in, a, in a given week, I'm talking to at least five different countries and very similar problems. Uh, there are, the world is more flatter than ever before, especially with the technology we use and how convoluted or how supply chains are. Uh, and and uh, when it comes to uh, and, and to Sandeep's point, right? Uh, uh, the, these e-commerce, e e-tailers, omnichannel retailers, and some of these uh, fast-moving products where their margins are low, and they they were they, they deal with a lot of consumers, and if they are off by even five percent of the forecast, they lose business. Forget about even even making losing profit; they lose business altogether. So in businesses like that, they are they are super focused in making sure that their forecast accuracy has a lot of sophistication. On the other spectrum, we deal with very large enterprises where their each product, just a single item, is worth about fifty thousand dollars. They have big margins, so their accuracy tolerance is is much different. So it's not it's not like they don't want more accurate forecast, but they are okay to deal with less accurate forecast. It's kind of Odd that you know for an expensive product you're okay to deal with inaccuracy, but that's how the and it also depends on what kind of monopoly or dominance they have in the market. And there are all these things that play in terms of how sophisticated do they get in building the a forecast accuracy model. And it's not just the forecast accuracy, but the supply chain efficiencies that they build. Okay, okay, thank you. That really helps. Uh, Mr. Ankur Chaturadi, your perspective on how have artificial intelligence and machine learning revolutionized supply chain management, if you can add uh, some interesting insights here? Uh, yeah, most of it has already been uh, uh, covered. I was just adding some, a bit from the manufacturing side. If you look at AI in preventive maintenance, or I would say predictive maintenance, that's a very, very big area, especially in the automobile sector. There are a lot of automobile companies who are going into using AI 
where you get into predictive and uh, uh, predictive maintenance moving away from preventive maintenance uh, in case in fact arpit shared a case study of the beer company where the filters were being changed based on historical data and when you used ai they got additional capacity so that's another line in where ai can contribute significantly in the supply chain fine mr sandeep call you would like to add something to the uh, contribution of uh, or uh, how ai and ml have revolutionized supply chain management i think uh, uh, first and foremost i think uh, we have been before ai or mi came into picture uh, from the last couple of years uh, if you talk about a decade back or even even five years back uh, people talked a lot about supply chain visibility and uh, supply chain visibility being one of the foremost kpis or kras of a supply chain manager or organizations but somehow it was not getting uh, uh, traction at the ground level it was not getting implemented it uh, always remained in textbooks and in the corporate presentation but with ai i think a lot of supply chain visibility has improved and uh, yes the organizations have got into the game of ai they have dedicated their resources they have dedicated their cash they have investment invested into ai assets whether it is iot sensors or whether it is uh, no different cameras or whether it is a the the, the, the data part a uh, lot of visibility comes to the control tower or the dashboard of a supply chain manager today i think that's the biggest <laughs> contribution and if we if we basically map visibility of supply chain with the velocity velocity of a supply chain can never be realized if there is no visibility so not only are you are getting visibility but you are increasing the velocity of your uh, supply chain and therefore increasing the cash to cash cycle for the business and okay. then you yeah, know with your competitors in the industry okay thank you very much uh, now, now uh, let me the last question of the day to mr manju which is i think very interesting and you know that's where technology and ai can really help is uh, uh, how do we manage the de uh, demand forecast accuracy and inventory when the scenario is changing often due to covid 19 yeah this uh, question gets asked a lot uh, especially because enterprises are typically used to planning for 12 months 18 months and in some cases up to 2 years and when your covid 19 scenario is changing by region geography geography pin or zip code countries countries lockdown and release and second wave expected it is overwhelming for demand planners supply planners to be ready with scenarios as scenarios change so my general first advice is make sure you have an agile working model it could be a combination of machine learning model or your excel model or your tool based system but you need to have agility in your model you need to have ability to run multiple scenarios and course correct in short intervals if you if you run a weekly model figure out how can i can run a daily model if you run a daily model figure out how you can run a hourly model be ready to course correct and be ready to be be uh, prepare your processes to be agile as well prepare your people to be agile as well because if you are able to get these three things worry about how covid 19 eventually lands because there is no, no, neither is the prime minister or a president able to predict what's going to happen why at an enterprise level are you breaking your head over for every possible scenario but at the same time if you have an agile planning system with the, with the people to go with it and the process which are able to modify then the scenarios that are able to plan because you can now run like a thousand scenarios in less than $1000 right with which you cannot employ enough humans to run those scenarios running rapid scenarios is not your challenge but prioritizing the, you run the scenarios through this cloud machine learning ai and you prioritize the best scenarios among them which gives you the optimal results with the supply demand inventory now you make sure your process and rest of it is ready with it so i think if you prepare it that way now no matter how covid 19 evolves in a country or across countries you'll be ready for it and that's my general advice and not and also the second thing i advise people is don't try to worry about don't worry or don't try to put a lot of stress in the enterprise try to figure out when covid 19 will end because you create more panic or stress in the system by trying to figure out an end date for that so that's that those are my two observations of the many enterprises
Vivek, we can't hear you unless others can hear him. Uh, Vivek, sir, you're on mute. Yeah. Oh, sorry for that. Nehal, uh, can I start the QA, QA now? Yes, 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 sir, please. Manju, there are some questions for you which I will request you to answer. Uh, the first one has come from Haridas Menon. He wants to know uh, what is Google's USP for this specific situation created by uh, COVID uh, when it comes to other providers in the market? I mean, he's basically comparing other providers and wants to know your USP. Uh, I'll talk on, as a Google partner, I'll make some statements, but I'll also uh, feel free to have uh, Jaydeep from Google also chime in here. Uh, what I can tell is, um, one, uh, apart from the platform itself being ready for predictive analytics and, and all those, and to be able to bring third-party data and, and blend and give you better scenario, Google also has been proactive in, in, in providing uh, data sets that help with uh, with COVID-19 analysis. For example, if you go into BigQuery and if you look at public data sets, there is COVID-19 data sets already available. If you're doing demand forecasting, combine that data set with your uh, shipment or your historical data sets and plan the scenario. So these kind of capabilities at a system level is unique. The second is, when you think about all the data that's available in uh, which is you know authorized where you have a authorization to leverage for example you run ads you run your 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 customers are watching youtube videos or whatever those signals are you are able to now bring all those things to google cloud and generate a much more sensible demand forecast depending on your industry right you know sometimes sometimes all the digital footprints that your customers leave on your website and everything now you can bring them into your demand forecast, generate a better forecast. Like uh, one of the other panelists mentioned, you know, like if you generate good demand forecast, then your supply is better as well. So, and, and lastly, the fact that you are able to connect, um, put all this data in one place, and, and of course Google's Android based operating system, plus this single sign on with Gmail, there are a lot of things about you and your suppliers and partners you can get onto the platform much easily. More than the AI decisions, it's the fact that everybody can get onto the same platform looking at the same data itself helps transform. So it's a long answer for the USP, but I want to make sure that the, the bigger benefit out of this is, is understood. Thank you. And there's one more question, uh, uh, which is uh, asking for something completely different. It, uh, the question is, is from Mr. Sanjay. He wants to know, do you have training modules of your products? We do uh, conduct uh, short trainings around, um, you know, the, especially around demand forecasting, preventive maintenance, and some of those as part of our workshop. But we also do, we have done training for some large organizations, training them on from a domain angle or from a technology combined with business transformation. So we, we do those as well. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, with this, I will hand it over back to Nehal to take proceedings further. Thank you, Mr. Sharma, and thank you so much to all our panelists. Uh, that was a quite insightful session and uh, truly valuable takeaways. Mr. Sharma, a special thanks to you for summarizing the entire panel discussion and duly helping in answering the relevant questions raised by our attendees. Uh, gentlemen, truly valuable takeaways. Uh, thank you so much once again. With this, we bring today's virtual conference to an end. We would like to uh, highlight at this point about the two-hour discovery workshop with Pluto 7, supply, uh, Pluto 7 supply chain AI experts. To know more, you may get in touch with Pluto 7 team at contact at Pluto7.com. In case you, if you already are on Google Cloud Platform, Pluto 7 also offers you a free two-week assisted trial for the solutions to avail. You may please contact Pluto7 at the email mentioned below, which is contact at the rate pluto7.com. With this uh, today's session, I would like to just mention this once again. Today's session wouldn't have been a success without the active participation of all our esteemed speakers, panelists, and delegates. I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking time out and being part of this virtual conference today. A special thanks to Google Cloud and Pluto 7 for the support in this initiative, without whom this conference wouldn't have been possible. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.
थैंक यू थैंक यू सर